Hi there. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided. It really it is very much appreciated. And in particular to uh, Tony Berndred, a good old Yorkshireman. And uh, he provided me um, with some advice when I made the carriage stop in the last video. And he suggested that I make something similar, um, like the carriage stop, but something that can hold a long travel dial indicator on it. So uh, in that way you can uh, measure quite accurately the distance of the carriage. And uh, I thought that was a pretty good idea actually. So um, I decided to buy a long travel dial indicator. So uh, this is what I bought from uh, Machine DRO. And uh, it's, it's quite a, a nice sort of style to it because the inside dial turns um, like that and it's, it's quite easy to keep track of the total distance. And uh, this is the attachment I made out of aluminium. How about that then? There's two inch of travel on this, so quite a lot really. Now then, uh, I must apologise as well for um, uh, calling the Stuart uh, 10V a V10. Um, I, I think I might have referred to it as a V10 on a, a, a couple of occasions. Um, so apologies for that. I'll try and get it right going forward. And uh, anyway, in this video, I'm going to have a go at making the crankshaft for the Stuart 10V. Well the crankshaft assembly is made out of four components. We've got the crank pin, the uh, two crank webs and the actual crankshaft. Now it's a little bit confusing in the fact that uh, the maths uh, on this diagram just don't add up. And there's a typo here, it says the distance between the edges of both crank webs is 5 eighths of an inch and in fact it should be 11 sixteenths of an inch. And um, I've ascertained that from this book. Um, however, this book also suggests that um, this line here is um, 5 sixteenths of an inch from the bottom, but in fact the maths again don't add up, so I reckon it should be 7 30 seconds of an inch. So I've uh, cut the piece of steel bar in half that makes up the crank webs and um, I'll join those together with some Loctite 638 and then I'll face off one end and then I'll mark those up. And the crankshaft needs to be, um, let me see, 3 and 5 sixteenths of an inch long. So I'll face up those ends to make that particular dimension. Okay, so both of the crank webs are joined with uh, Loctite 638. Um, I've scribed a line down the centre and then I've scribed a line 730 seconds from this faced end and then the distance between this line and this other scribed line is 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to centre drill here and then I'm going to um, drill and ream up to uh, 930 seconds of an inch in diameter. Then I'll centre drill here and I'll drill and ream to a quarter of an inch diameter. So I've uh, drilled to 6.8 millimetres in diameter and now I'm going to ream with this 930 seconds of an inch reamer. Running at about 500 rpm. So 
So I need to uh, move the x-axis across um, to this point here, uh, 3 eighths of an inch, and I work that out to be 9.525 millimetres. Two, four, six, eight, nine point five and a bit. Just double check that. Perfect. So I'll centre drill, drill to 6mm in diameter, and then I'll finish it with a quarter inch ream. Okay, so off camera uh, I faced up the other end and now it's a matter of putting a radius on each end. Now the radius is um, 19 30 seconds of an inch and I've worked out that the radius uh, runs pretty much from the centre of each of the holes. So um, I know this looks a little bit convoluted um, but it is I think fairly straightforward. I've put the rotary table on and centred the rotary table um, using my uh, centering tool which is this, it's got a two more taper on it and uh, it fits in there and it's a simple method of centering the table. Having done that, I've now put a vise on here and uh, secured the piece within the vise. Let the vise sort of run fairly loosely and put a drill bit in just to give me a guide. Now I've got that again centered I've uh, clamped the vise down so now this piece will move around that center. So now it's a matter of putting a cutter on here and moving the uh, y-axis that way in order for me to cut a radius. Well there's probably a far easier method of doing this but I don't know what it is. So um, I've moved the y-axis that way and um, I've made it so that the cutter is just touching the corners. So what I'll do is I'll move the y-axis in a little bit more uh, by about ten thou. I'll start cutting and I'll keep on cutting until I just reach that midpoint there and hopefully I'll have the right radius. Well, I think my blunt, uh, my cutter's a bit blunt, so uh, I'll uh, carry on with a larger cutter. That sounded about right. So I've uh, turned the crank webs around and uh, again I've recentered the rotary table 
and then I've centered the vise um, on this hole here so it revolves around that so what I'll do now is I'll put a cutter in here and I'll move the y-axis that way and just nibble off until the cutter just reaches the midpoint there Oops. Well, I'm sure there must be an easy way of putting a radius on, but um, I got there in the end. Look pretty reasonable. And what I have done is just put a little mark on the insides so I know how to match these up. So that's how they were made, those two faces there. So I just put a little mark in the middle so that when I assemble it, I'll assemble it like that. Okay, so for the crank pin, I've just turned the end of this rod down uh, to be a quarter inch diameter by three sixteenths in length. And now I need to leave a gap here of uh, five sixteenths of an inch before I use this parting tool to uh, cut the other side uh, to be again a quarter of an inch diameter by three sixteenths of an inch so um, I've locked the uh, carriage down and I'll use the compound slide to move this parting tool along five sixteenths of an inch which equates to uh, seven point nine three or seven point nine four millimeters One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I estimate it to be that, so let's just have a look at that. Looks good to me. So like I say, I'll just use this parting tool uh, to cut it to a depth of a uh, quarter inch diameter for a width of uh, three sixteenths of an inch and then I'll part it off. Okay, so that seems to have worked out pretty well. Looking good so far. So I've decided to do the assembly off camera using this Loctite 638. Um, I think it'll be quite fiddly. But the approach I'll take is, first of all, I'll um, assemble the crank webs to the crank pin. And hopefully before that goes off, I'll then slide the crank webs on here. Uh, stopping at that little point there, which is one and a quarter inch before the end. Well, I've uh, just come across a video by uh, Tinker John, and uh, he recommends putting pins in through the crank webs into the crank pin and the crankshaft. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to follow uh, his approach. So that's a uh, 1.2 millimeter drill bit, and I've got some. Uh, little uh, nails which are the same diameter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drill round about uh, eight millimeters down into there and I'll do it in, in the four places 
and then I'll pin it. So that's the four holes drilled and I've uh, just put these pins in, uh, fixed them with Loctite and uh, once that's gone off I'll just uh, snip the top off of each of them and uh, finish them off with a file. Well that works out very well and you can hardly see where those pins are. You need a magnifying glass. Very happy with that. Okay so I've just used a hacksaw to cut the middle section out of the crankshaft and uh, I've found a couple of old split pins uh, to support it and uh, doing it that way uh, makes the crank pin um, sort of out of the way of the cutter so there's no risk of me cutting the crank pin and what I'll do is I'll just take um, very slight cuts off the side uh, just to make it flush um, with the crank webs Well, that was an interesting little exercise and it's the first time I've had a go at making a fabricated crankshaft and uh, I think the overall result is pretty good. Um, I'm particularly happy with the way the crank pin um, sort of comes out of the side of the crank web or the crank webs. Um, they're very, very tidy. Um, it took me a while to make the radius on the crank webs and I suppose um, in the future I might think of a different approach but it did give me um, a good opportunity to have a play around with the rotary table again so, so that was quite enjoyable and uh, what have I learned? Well, parallels um, I didn't keep my eye on the parallel and the parallel gradually came out and of course it uh, caused it to uh, catch the cutter so I'm not too sure what, what the answer is to that I think you can get wavy ones which might help and uh, maybe I'll just look at putting um, a bit of uh, blue tack on it or something like that in the future anyway if anybody has any thoughts on that I'd really appreciate it um, but anyway um, I hope you like the results so far <laughs>